Hello there, freaks and geeks. Welcome to another edition of Up Your Geek Spotlight. I'm your host, Lulamar Booker, and today we have a truly magical episode lined up for you. Joining us from the enchanted corridors of Hogwarts, or more precisely, the Lyric Theater on Broadway, is none other than Joel Myers. You may know him best for his spellbinding portrayal of Albus Potter in the critically acclaimed production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Today, Joel will share with us the highs and lows of living in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, his memorable experiences on stage, and what magic lies ahead for him after his departure from the show. So grab your wands, settle in, and let's dive into a conversation filled with magic, insights, and a look behind the curtain with Joel Myers. <laughs> Welcome to Up Your Geek Spotlight. And today on the show, we're going to speak with Joel Myers, who is currently in Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at the Lyric Theater on Broadway. Joel plays Albus Potter, the son of the famous Harry Potter, or infamous, depending on how you look at it, right? Depending on your, your perspective. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So today, uh, Joel's going to share with us some highlights and some highs and lows living in the wizarding world of Harry Potter, his memorable experiences on the stage, and what magic lies ahead after his departure. So we hear, Joel, that you're going to be leaving soon. I am, yeah. Um, November 10th is my graduation from Hogwarts. All right. So grab your wand, settle in, and let's dive into this conversation filled with magic insights and a look behind the curtain with Joel Myers. So, Joel, so you've been bringing Albus to life on Broadway and for the last two years. Could you share what initially drew you to this role and how did it I come mean, to you? Yeah, well, so, I mean, first and foremost, it's Harry Potter, right? Who doesn't love Harry Potter? I'm a big Harry Potter fan. I grew up right in the right time for it, you know? So when it when the audition listing came up on Actors Access is, is kind of the site yeah. where a lot of yeah. these things get posted. And it came, I've told the story so many times, but it came up and it was like, I was like, oh, haha, it's Harry Potter. And I told my girlfriend, oh, look, it's, we're both Harry Potter fans. I was like, look, it's a call, open call for Harry Potter. And she was like, you have to audition. And I was like, ah, I'm never going to cast someone out of, out of one of these open calls calls yada 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 but then what what the kicker was is that the for the students in the show on the casting call the, the, there's a height limit of five yeah. seven and below so that you know you can oh, wow. tell who's, yeah. who's who's a kid who's an adult and she was like you're short this is for you <laughs> and so then i i auditioned <laughs> and went all the way through the process and here we are two years later yeah so reflecting on your time is albus so what's been one of the most memorable moments for you on stage oh man i mean you know i think for us the, the show for me is kind of marked by the events around the stage because you know the, the show is we do the same show every night um the it you know the, each experience is different but it all kind of the actual yeah performing of it blends together a little bit but you know one of the most memorable things for us in our time there was being a part of the fifth anniversary for the show was a really special oh, yeah. moment and they had one of the weasley twins from the films come and oliver phelps and and a bunch of other you know people who were involved with the show and there was a big sort of gathering about it and we did like a, a wand dance video on the edge and a bunch of other events in yeah. that week and it was just kind of like a really that was about a little less than halfway through our first year. And that was just kind of a really special thing to be a part of and be thrown into and be like, wow, this is such a cool coming together of all this history of the show on Broadway and beyond. Um, so that, that stands out to me as like one of the, one of the pillar moments of this whole experience, I think as just being in that, that show doing the fifth anniversary show, they had a lot of friends and family there. We had a lot of, we have our super fans for the show who've seen it many, many times and they were all invited, which is really cool. And they got to sit kind of right in the front and they were bringing the energy. And it was, it was, yeah. it was like the closest to being that. And when we had one day, we had like a New York city school buyout. So it was all students yeah. in the show. And those two experiences, like the closest 
to I've ever felt to being a rock star, just in the level of energy from <laughs> the audience was great. I'm sure. So, I'm yeah. sure. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. They they tend to do that here. Uh um our schools here have theater programs and mm-hmm. theater majors in the high school and people they go on Broadway trips every year. So they're yeah. always super excited. We um, love it when when this when the student trips come and we get people from Georgia, from Texas, from all over, and it's so fun to see them at the stage door. And now, now of course, we're getting people, you know, like your son's school who are coming and saying, "We're doing the show." This is <laughs> like, yeah, <"Yay." laughs> yeah. It's been an amazing experience. Yeah, especially when you have to. There's competition for it, and they're like, they're totally. we're only going to select one school, and so it's like yeah. it's a big deal. <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. I have to ask, who's he playing? Does he know? Yes, Amos. Very good. So, that would be a lot of fun. It, it was it was great, and so so I know you hear sometimes you hear a lot of the same questions. So here's a, here's good. one. Maybe maybe you haven't had, and so so if Albus Potter had the day to spend in our non magical, so what do you think he would be most fascinated by, and why? Oh, if he had a day to spend in non magical, that's a great question. I think, man. That's a really good question. I mean, canonically, I have to say some sort of pigeon husbandry. The super fans will know what I mean. Um, yeah. I think, <laughs> I think Albus really liked New York City. Albus likes, yeah. you know, adventure. Likes a lot. Like Times Square would be an experience for Albus. We've always joked about making like an Albus and Scorpius turn time and go to ah, Times Square. We wanted to do awesome. a crossover with like Back to the Future at some point, but that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> that would be but awesome. I think that would be, a, you know, I think that would be a very, I think Albus would be, you know, I mean, in my feeling about it, I feel like Albus has largely been sheltered from the muggle world because, yeah. you know, his, his mom grew up only in the wizarding world and Harry very yeah. much doesn't want to return <laughs> to the muggle world for obvious reasons. And so I think that the muggle world has some allure for Albus that he would just want to check out like the sub, like just how it works, you know? Yeah. That would so be, think, it, yeah. that sounds like an awesome, like, it'd be a great little crossover. Uh, I think it'd be so much maybe fun. Some sort maybe, of maybe next project. year they'll do it. Let's speak it into existence. A little side <laughs> I'll, I'll will here. it. I'll will it for the next Albus. <laughs> <laughs> um so can you describe your interpretation of albus potter and how it evolved over time with the production sure i mean you know my my feeling about albus from the start was always that the main uh area of friction between albus and harry is that they're very alike yeah. you know and I, I, as i think many of us probably know from our own you know child parent experiences that doesn't always that isn't always a recipe for harmony um, you know, I think, I think what's so similar about them is that they both, you know, as is, as is sort of said at the end of the show, like they both have a very good heart and they always, they both always want to do the right thing, but don't always know how to do that. And I think right. that's, you know, that, that's like, like, that's what Harry learns in the books. And I think that's Albus's journey in the show too, is that, you know, it's, you know, I won't spoil anything, but right. Al, you know, <laughs> Albus comes in and and wants to, you know, go on this adventure for a very good reason, and but doesn't always know, like, doesn't always understand the consequences of that. And I think that is at the core of who Albus is. And, you know, playing Albus for two years, that, that you know, one of the gifts of doing a show like this for so long is you get to explore that in different ways. And how does it come out, you know, in a different, in a different way, in different scenes every night. And that's kind of, yeah. there are things that I am still I'll be in the middle of a show and be like, oh man, I've never thought of it this way before, you know, and sort of get to do it a little bit different that night. And that's, that's, that's been definitely one of a, one of the things that keeps you in a show like yeah. this for so long is you just <laughs> without losing your mind, you know, but also just with the gift of getting to explore it with everyone else on stage, you know, with Eric and, and everyone else on stage every night is so much, so much fun. Um, so being a follower of yours, so I, I, I saw when kind of when this journey was starting for you, you have a, a post that you had put up that you talked about doing when you saw your first Broadway show on June 9th, 2013, and it was Spider-Man Turn of the Dark. Uh, yes. and, and, and you were talking about how that kind of started the gears turning in your head. Like, maybe this is something mm-hmm. I want to do. Can you tell us about that experience? Totally. Yeah. I'm, well, it should be said that was in, in it was it, at that in point, that it was called the theater, Foxwoods yeah. Theater, it, yeah. but now it's the same theater. And I didn't actually realize that until maybe a couple of days into rehearsal. Because oh, yeah. the, the theater is completely redone. Designed for Harry Potter, so, yeah. And I didn't really put that together. And that was definitely like an oh, wow moment. Because, you know, it's sort of the, you know, it literally yeah. when you're sitting there as a kid watching, you know, Spider-Man 2, another yeah. big spectacle show, lots of, you know, Spider-Man flying over your head and it, 
very yeah. very cool and it was just a moment of for me like i think seeing what like theater is capable of yeah you know there's there's you know i i i am equally and perhaps even more a fan of the very small small theater intimate like as a as an actor i love that sort of stuff too but there is something about shows like harry potter shows like spider-man you know or wicked or any of these big lion king big spectral shows of just like it really drives home especially for someone seeing something like that for the first time just like what is possible when a bunch of people get together in a theater and want to create something really really cool and that that I think was that was like the first that was my first Broadway show I ever saw. That was the first my first time I, I guess you think my second time in New York, my first time at the theater in New York. Yeah. But seeing, you know, just seeing what was possible out there and not like nothing I'd ever seen before. And so that was definitely a moment where I was like, man, I would love to be a part of something like this. My and goodness. so to, you know, I didn't, I didn't make it, I didn't make it to Spider-Man. It closed before, <laughs> before my time came around. <laughs> I would have loved to have been a Peter Parker, but yeah. Albus is, 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 a, is a pretty good consolation prize, I will say. So it's really special to be in that same theater and to, you know, just to be on the other side of that every night at the stage door meeting kids who were in the same, literally the same seat as I was, you know, that however is, many yeah. years ago, which that is, was a, which yeah. is crazy. Uh, yeah. It had a beautiful message there where you said, because I know that the next person to step into this role, step on this stage, could be sitting right out in the house tonight, um, Absolutely. waiting for their dreams to take shape. And, and to that person, I say, shoot for the stars. Absolutely. I stand by that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. For, for any aspiring person who's sitting there like, hey, I would love to do this. That that was my son. And so that was, he couldn't stop talking about it after we left. And so that, you know, that's like, that's great. I tried to, to talk to him about how that, that feeling is. And you kind of described it perfectly here with your experience. And so <laughs> I showed him that and I was like, that that's like all, awesome. Hey, well, look, call me, you know, when <laughs> yeah. Larry can all, you know, get, get me a front row seat. <laughs> sure will. Playing this significant role here of this mm. beloved character in this huge franchise um it had to come with some challenges so what were some of the hurdles that you faced um and how did you overcome them totally i mean the fortunate thing about albus and scorpius right is that they are for most people coming to the show they're new characters yeah. so yes we're part of this whole wizarding world but it's it's not quite like being a harry a ron or a hermione yeah. you know or even a Ginny, where it's sort of there is there is this yeah. expectation of who these characters are so you know Eric and I are very fortunate in that sense that we that we got to come in. We're also very very fortunate that the, that the the show and the creative team in the show gives us a lot of leeway to make these characters our own. So we've we've had a lot of joy and a lot of freedom to to do that. Of course, that comes with the challenge of like how how do you how do you make it your own? And you you don't really want to do it like anyone else because if you're trying right. to do it someone else, it's not going to work for you. And so that, that <laughs> it's been a, a journey of. Of two years, you know, there's there's things I'm still figuring out about how to play Elvis every night, and and you know, the then there's the very like logistical challenge of how do you do eight shows a week? It's a as yeah. you know, it's a long show. It's three and a half hours, and it's you know, it's pretty physically demanding, and so it's it's a lot of it's a lot of reorienting your life around being able to do the show at seven p.m. every night, and that's definitely yeah. you know. For me, this is my first time in a show like this. It's it's definitely an experience that took some took some learning and took some like oh let's maybe not do that or, or let's do this instead, you know. But I think the the biggest thing that that keeps you in it is frankly the people you're doing it with, and I and we we are really lucky at Harry Potter have such a wonderful company of actors and creatives and you know stage team and wardrobe team and hair and makeup team and everyone. I think you know when we're on that that Saturday night seventh show of the week, everyone kind of rallies and and and, right. and pushes everyone through <laughs> and it, it makes it you know books could be written tv shows could be made about the antics that happen behind a broadway stage that you never see <laughs> but it's that that's what it is you know at at a certain point we're all just theater kids with more expensive toys which is great <laughs> and that is that is how the magic happens and that i think has been kind of the most special part of this and the thing that has kept me doing it i guess just being in good company yeah. <laughs> with good people <laughs> Um, in the in the process of becoming Albus, did you incorporate any personal symbols or hidden elements that, let's say, you know, audience members wouldn't notice, but were significant sure. to you? They have evolved over time. There is one that super fans of the show 
Eric and I are sort of known as a Alba Scorpius pair for there's a moment where we sort of take a take a breath a couple yeah. times. Um, that originally came out of something that Eric wanted to throw in only on our opening night for his parents as like a reference to a show he had done in high school. And then, that's awesome. and then we did it, and I was like, "Well, let's just keep doing this." So yeah. I, I threw it in later, and it's become its whole thing, and that's like <laughs> our signature. There's a couple of the, there's awesome. one moment I will say in that I'm not sure anyone's ever figured out. There is what there is my own personal reference in the train station scene in Act Two that I I do make a reference to Prisoner of Azkaban, yes. and I will leave it at that. If anyone can figure out what my that son is. did did he he sure did okay i'm glad <laughs> that's great because no one's ever no one's ever mentioned that to me he but said, i've always he wanted said it, someone and I'm like <laughs> i'm like what he said yeah from he said it's from prisoner of azkaban i'm like that's great oh my god i love that that's love that. yeah i'm he, glad he figured it out because <laughs> I've, I've always wanted someone to be like ah, it's, it's it's that's like you know funny. it's it's comedy but it is it is grounded in the world i will say that that's um, awesome so you know um, little things like that that we <laughs> You know, do if you could write a letter to Albus, giving him any advice or insights from your own life, what would you tell him? Chill out, mostly. <laughs> no, I think you know. Again, I would, I would, I yeah. would say. I mean, you know, I I understand Albus on the level of you know fighting for the right thing, and and that you know, yeah. as Albus says in the show, like it's it's hard, especially when you're growing up, to kind of come to terms with the fact that life isn't always fair. And that's yeah. a very, you know, I, I think that phrase is thrown around a lot it's of surreal. just like, ah, yeah. life isn't fair, you know, but it, it is a very real thing that, that you, I think we all contend with as we continue to grow in life and it comes back and back and back. And I think that my, I, I wish I had great sage advice for someone like Albus, but really it would be just like, you know, I, it's hard, but like, don't lose sight of the fact that your heart is in the right place. You know, even if yeah. there are, there are bumps and bruises along the way <laughs> in terms of, <laughs> you know yeah that's yeah yeah that's that's great and uh, i think that and he would i think that he would kind of take that advice in so i would um, hope so yeah i'd recommend he also wear <laughs> wear grippier shoes because the albus shoes can get on stage sometimes <laughs> but that's that's between that's between yeah. albus and me <laughs> <laughs> um so during your time in the show were there any on stage magical mishaps that turned into memorable moments Oh man, I mean, we've had so many things, you know, in a show like this, every scene, there's the potential for something to go <laughs> yeah. seriously wrong. Just the other night we were doing, we were doing, there's the scene in the church towards the end and there's some transitions where yeah. I'm like sleeping and then I get up and I'm walking, walking, and I have this moment where I turn and I look at mom and I turn to look in the middle of the music and our stage manager is standing there. And I was like, what? In the middle of this. <laughs> and it was because something had gone wrong and we had to yeah. like stop for, and things like that. We've had, we once had, I, this wasn't me in a scene, but it's a good story of, at a certain point in, this, in the, in the show, it snows. Mm, yeah. And there's a scene before that. That's a very tender scene between Harry and Dumbledore and they're in the middle of that scene it's very tender and all of a sudden there's kind of a clang and all of the snow dumps oh, on the stage no. <laughs> I've never seen anyone move oh, so fast no. as Steve who's Harry running yeah. off stage and it was good he did he got, he got out of the, he did the right thing but it was that was that was kind of our one of our favorite of just like it snowed oh, wow. in Harry's office <laughs> the whole pile just fell <laughs> um yeah so things things like that we have you wow. know any given night there's there's things that happen and yeah the, the number of like time turners that have been dropped by eric and i <laughs> oh my goodness that was something too i'm like i was like i see the like it's it's being held there in suspension and i'm like you know how does that not like fall and it's i, I guess there's some mishaps. It's magic i did see, i did see an interview with you about the train fire when you're walking across the top oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how do you avoid that big flame yeah. there and <laughs> it was a lot of a lot of very specific you know you got to be in the right place otherwise yeah. the, <laughs> there's yeah. re the fire is real <laughs> the fire is real oh yeah we can feel it <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty good we can yeah it's it's very warm so you definitely don't want to deviate from the assigned path yeah i can imagine <laughs> if we can feel it in the audience i can imagine what it feels like for you guys like being right next to it so. yeah no we, we have a very a very good team of of 
pyro and SFX specialists who who keep us all safe, and we, we've got a lot of eyes on us. Nothing, nothing, nothing drastic will happen, but it is you know <laughs> you still are aware of it on stage every night. And you know, as as I say to a lot of people, like the magic looks just about as real on stage as it does from the house. So it's a very yeah, it's very cool. Oh, it, it was it was it's <laughs> beautifully of. done. Oh, it's it's amazing. It, yeah. it is. We were the the dementors and everything. It mm-hmm. was it was beautiful. It was like wow, this is even the the scene between Malfoy and Harry having that yeah. fight. I I watch that every single night. Like, this from, is amazing. The, yeah, the, I was like, wow. And then you're trying to figure out how everything's working. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, I, my favorite, my favorite are the the theories we get at the stage door. <laughs> Some of yeah. them, I mean, I, you know, I cannot say <laughs> yeah. anything. Our, our our illusions associate has 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 said on the record, so I can say this: that most of what is being done on that stage are just conventional theater magic things that could have been done a hundred years ago. Yeah, but yeah. but I know, what, the, I know what's theories, happening in that Harry in that Harry Malfoy scene. I get you know. Sure, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's... But s- some of the theories we get are like, I'm like, man, I I wish that's how it worked. That would be really, you know. But it's <laughs> it's not. It's usually you know Occam's razor sort of <laughs> yeah. situation. But <laughs> I totally yeah. get that. Um, so role swap. If you hmm. could swap roles with any character in harry potter oh, series man. for a week who would it be and why oh man there's a lot of like one line characters in the show i would love to play yeah station like i want to do a track of the trolley witch station master you know like that i think someone what they should just make one track that was one a- actor and like and like rotate through the cast who yeah. do it. i think that'd be so much that fun. will be funny no i mean i mean i would love would love to play who would i like to show it would be very interesting to play harry coming from albus and sort of play the other side of that just because I'm, yeah. I'm so ingrained yeah, on so. one side of that that'd be a very interesting I'm, I'm not tall enough unfortunately but oh well <laughs> um <laughs> but yeah i think i think either either harry or my favorite character in all of harry potter is hermione yeah. um i'm 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 a ravenclaw but so oh I'm, I, I'm always i'm always you know a, a, a hermione fan no matter no matter what it is so i have to tell so all right my son is a raven very good and he <laughs> he's like he said when he talked to joel ask him what house he belongs to he's super excited about that well tell him ravenclaw is the best house no bias it's just an objective fact <laughs> that's awesome and yeah he's gonna love that um <laughs> so how has playing a role steeped in fantasy affected your view of the real world oh that's an interesting question. I, th- I mean i think something like harry potter that is this i don't know I, I guess i don't know the terminology if it's high fantasy or just fantasy the right. fandom can come after me for that i think you know I, to me the purpose of fantasy is you're you're taking real world feelings and and conflict and interpersonal conflict and you're you're just tightening it with context and i think that that's so true of you know one of the things we hear a lot from people who come and see the show without knowing much about it is they'll say oh yeah you know man I went to see Harry Potter. Often we get Harry Potter the musical, even though it's a play. And and be like, yeah, man, I I don't know. I, I was expecting all the magic, but like, man, it was actually a like it was actually a good show. And we're like, thank you. But also I think I think what surprises people is like how much heart there is yeah. to the show and how much it actually does live in a very familiar place. And that you know, I, I think I find myself thinking about things that are covered or brought up in the show in my own life a lot more while doing it, which is not, yeah. not even, you know, even going into it, I, I'd actually, I'd never seen the show before being in it, but I'd read it back when it came out, but I... I don't think I really expected that either. Of just be like, oh man, this like th- there is a lot of very real world, very sort of familiar, universally familiar themes in this show that that come up yeah. and throughout. And I think that is, you know, it any piece of theater is 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 just kind of a lens at which to look back at yeah. your life. And I think that that is that is very much true for this show. And I think that that is people people come for the magic, people stay for the heart. Is kind of what I like to say. And I think that uh-huh. that's yeah, my biggest that takeaway nice. from yeah. <laughs> I I agree there. There is a lot of heart in the story. And when you take away all that fantasy, it's like, can you, could you make this, could you make this story interesting even without the magic? And I think you can. I think, Um, yeah, John, John Tiffany, the original director said in interviews and said to us at one point, like the minute, you know, when they were building this show, no one knew whether the show was going to work like any show, you know? And, and he said that, that like the minute that they knew it would work is when they sat down for a read through 
you know, without any of the magic, without any yeah. of the beautiful set, any of the sound, anything. And they just read the play and it, and people yeah. were moved by it in the room. And he, he was like, that was yeah. the minute I knew it was going to work. And I think that that is, that's amazing. So much. So true. You know, that is amazing. So can you share any aspects of the show's production that feels just as magical behind the scenes as it does on the stage? Other than all of it, I think, <laughs> yeah. I think, I think what the, the true magic of something like Harry Potter is the fact that you, that you don't see as an audience is like just how many people are working at like their highest so many level moving parts, behind, yeah. you know, there's, there's about 30 of us, 30 some of us in the cast, there's at least that many people, you know, yeah. behind around the stage every night. It takes five stage managers to run this show. Yeah. It takes a, a team of five hair and makeup people. It takes a team. I don't even know how many dressers are are moving around, making sure we're all good. As yeah. We have a team of carpenters and, and deck crew and automation crew. Like there's so, so many people kind of at the top of their fields working on this show. And that is, that is that, that come in every, you know, just, just like, the actor you know we do the we have to do the show at times a week so do they and that is and it is no small feat for everyone in that building to kind of together a day and, and do it and it's it's one of those things where it, like you look when you really step back and look at this show you're like man there yeah. this really shouldn't work over and over. like just on a purely <laughs> yeah. logistical level yeah it is insane that this works night like after a well-oiled night night. machine right like a well-oiled machine yeah. and even when the, it's not so well-oiled it's still it's you know yeah you, it's, that's what we, we call make it theater work. magic, right? That is live theater, that's, and that's that is the, the beauty yeah. of it. And I think that is that to me is the most magical aspect. It's just like <laughs> how the cookie gets made, you know. That's um, awesome, and that's true of every every show on Broadway, you know, and every yeah. every theater, you know, yeah. is, is your son knows from being in in, in this show at school. Like that is just it takes it takes a village, and that is that is what we have at the Lyric Theater. That is amazing. And speaking of that, that scene, those scenes and the crew, are there any backstage rituals or routines that you or the cast follow to kind of get into your character? Oh yeah. Or is it I mean, like a one off switch. It depends. As I said, there uh, books could be written. TV series could be made about the antics <laughs> behind a Broadway stage. You know, it's, we, we, we work, we work hard. We play hard. For sure. Eric and I have, you know, there's kind of a, a, an unwritten rule that if something happens like three times in a row yeah. backstage, it's tradition after that. And it has to happen over and over again. <laughs> so there's like, yeah, there's as much sort of like checkpoints backstage as there are on stage. Eric and I have, you know, we, there's a moment in the show. I can't tell you what it is. I will say it technically happens on stage where we play rock, paper, scissors every night. Yeah. I can tell you that I am in the lead by a good amount over two years. <laughs> I hope I'm a knock on wood that I can, that I can maintain that to the end, but you know, so little things like that every, and there's, there's so many that I, you know, I don't even know about it cause it's other, it's other people in different places, but that's just like how it happens. And that's, yeah, that's, it's, that's how you make, that's how you make a shit work is you find yeah. your little, your little, <laughs> your little things here and there. Well, that's beautiful. So Joel, as you prepare to leave the cast so what's been your most surprising or touching reaction would you say from audience members you know with your performances albus i mean you know from for me it's always hearing from as we were talking about earlier you know the kids who were in the house and seeing yeah. it something for the first time or or we get a lot of messages from you know young actors who were kind of where we were not too yeah. long ago S still kind of feel like we are to be honest. And I think that that that's a really special part of it for I know for me, I know for Eric, and I'm sure for other other people in the cast too, of just kind of that sense of passing the torch and and being a part of something that is such a such a vehicle for that of passing yeah. the torch along to the next the next generation the next the next <laughs> story you know i i know i'm i, I sound like a, gr a grizzled veteran i'm not but but i think yeah I, that's when someone when you can tell that someone is really taking in not only the show just for the yeah. show of it all but also really responding to what is happening on the stage even when there is no magic i think that's a really special yeah. feeling for us of like oh man they, someone really just experienced all of this and that is that's um, amazing yeah yeah you, you can't beat it you know and that's that's why that's why we do this and what emotions are you feeling as you're exiting the show oh i mean it, you know parting is such sweet sorrow it will be it will <laughs> be you know two two years is a, is a lot of time to do yeah. the same thing so there's a there's a part of me that's like oh man i have time again in my life yeah 
my girlfriend will be is very excited to like eat dinner before 8 p.m. <laughs> or before 11 p.m. You know, yeah. which is which is great, and it'll be nice to kind of return to to Muggle life. But you know, it it will be. There's a lot of you know. I've spent most of my days in the yeah. last two years with these people in this building doing this show. So it, it will be. It will be. It'll be a transition for sure. And it's yeah. definitely there's there's no there's no I think great time to leave something like this. But it also. Yeah has to happen at a certain point you know yeah i have to move on the show has to move on you know like it's good to to refresh a show like this every so absolutely and i think that that's that's very much how i felt coming into it of like as an opportunity to refresh i'm i'm excited for the next the next cast next year and beyond to go and make the show their own and that's that's what will happen so i'm i'm both excited and i'm also like oh like goodbye goodbye old friend albus potter you know so (laughs) And so yeah. what's next for Joel Myers? Are there new projects or roles you're pursuing after the cursed child or are you just kind of taking a break? I am I am pursuing sleep. I am pursuing you know, important. I mean it's that is yeah, important. It's, it, I don't I don't have anything anything <laughs> concrete on on the books in terms yeah. of stuff that you know we're kind of at the end of the year here, but yeah. Going out, you know, it's kind of back to square one of auditioning. And I, I, I do, I work on a, an immersive show that's over the phone called, called Lennox Mutual that I'm a, a co-creator of and sometime mm-hmm. performer of. So I, I do that. It's with a company called Candle House Collective. I do, I work with them. So I'll continue doing that sort of thing that I've been doing during Harry Potter. And I run a tutoring company. <laughs> that's, that's my oh, local job. Hey, my tutor, you, you know, right. math, science, all the, all the good, all the good stuff. All the all the Raven uh-huh. things, um, but yeah, other than that, it's kind of back to you know same yeah. finding the next Albus Potter and, oh, and yes, stepping out of the takes. Wizarding world and back into yeah. the Muggle lands. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah, it's getting, get, <laughs> exploring some life first, but then, then back yeah. to it. Yeah, 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 it's great. So, do you have any words or advice or encouragement for the next actor who will become Albus? Uh, as I told him already, I can't, I can't, I can't say who it is because I, I don't think that's been announced yet but i as i he <laughs> reached out to me and i i told him i was like drink some water and get some sleep you know and have fun like you'll figure it out you don't you don't you don't, you don't need sleep. you don't you won't need me or anyone else's <laughs> advice to to figure out who you are in this show you the only advice i can give you is just bring snacks and drink water <laughs> do you know if he's seen the show yes i, I do okay yeah, yeah. wow so um, i know they're they're in rehearsals right now and they're, all they're right. all very excited awesome um so yeah it would always i'll have to go again it'll always be interesting to see what the next person brings to the role totally yeah and so how do you hope to be remembered by the cast and the fans of this show oh man i you know i think every every elvis scorpius pair i i carves out their best version of the show yeah. that that lives on bull and i absolutely you know as i said that, that eric and i seem to be have become known for these this breathing thing that we do and some other you know just other little isms that we have and i think that that's always special that we will kind of always have that as our version of it and i i hope that people you know remember that and and i hope people take that and embrace what's to come and that's you know it's always i I think the show is constantly laying a foundation for its next iteration and i think that's that's the most you can ask for in a a show like this is just to kind of be you know in in a franchise like this so so much larger than any one person i think it's it's yeah just to have have played a small part and sort of be a part of this thing that I love that so many people love, I think is is the real gift. Yeah, of it. And yeah, yeah. You're gonna have you're gonna you're you're gonna have a, a fan base of people who you are gonna probably be their favorite Albus. Um, and what do you say to those people? Thanks for coming. Glad you enjoyed the show. No, I mean it's true, truly from the bottom of my heart. It's you know yeah. I favorite what I mean. I don't I don't I don't really know how you how you pick and choose other than just your own sort of feelings about it. But it's you know I I think there's people who've who've come back and back to see this show with yeah. the two of us in it. And to them I say that, you know it it's does. it's you know it, it is if people will come and they'll be like oh I'm, they'll be at the stage like oh I'm back again for number five and it's like you know it's like there's like we we love that. We we love yeah. to see people come back, and that's that's so Amazing. special to us to see familiar faces and and who yeah. really connect with it and connect with our version of it. And that's yeah. you know, as I said, like that's kind of what the show gives us that freedom to to make it our own and to and different people will always connect with different Albuses and Scorpiuses, and I think that's wonderful about it. Like everyone can kind of find their version of it that they love, and it's and it's something that that lives on and on and on. It doesn't just have to kind of be trying to, you know, 
yeah. stay to one version of it, which is so yeah. special about this show in particular, I think is like, you know, there are other shows that kind of can live in the shadow of whatever the first iteration was or not. But I, I don't, I don't think this is a show like that. I think this is a show that truly is most people yeah. can take it at what it is now. Yeah. You know, well, what it's what it's it, it has an amazing, it has an amazing fan base who will continue to follow it. It's just you as a, you as an actor in the role, you, you kind of, you draw fans who just, you know, like, like you as an actor, like you in that role as an actor and, and they'll follow you. And when you go, you like, you get into your next role somewhere yeah. and, and they're like, they're coming to the theater because they want to see Joel. Hey, the, the train compartment is open. That's all I can say <laughs> to that. You know, come on in, bring, bring sweets. Um. <laughs> yeah. So oh, looking yeah. back on this journey uh, from seeing your first Broadway show to now, mm-hmm. how has this experience shaped you as an actor and as a person? Oh man. I mean, as a sort of said a minute ago like i it's funny to be at the end of this experience and as a person kind of feel the same as i did when it started like yeah. there's a, an element of like man did, did that just happen did the you know there's when you're doing a show like this you kind of lose you lose sight very quickly of oh man this is broadway you know the thing eric and i always say to each other we're like oh yeah we always kind of feel like, oh, it's funny, you know, we're doing our yeah. little wizard play, school play here, and down the street is Wicked, and down the street is Hamilton. Yeah. Like, oh, but then we're like, no, this is Harry Potter <laughs> on Broadway, which is, <laughs> you know, which is so funny. You know, it's just, I don't think you ever feel, you never feel like you've made it or that you're at, you're in whatever club it is you think you'll feel like you're in. <laughs> yeah. um, it's just, that's just not how it works. And I, I I would hazard to guess that's true, even for, you know, the A-list, the A-listers out there, you know, who I don't don't, I just don't think if you truly love it, I think you don't want that either because that's what keeps you coming back and back and back for it of 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 feeling. You know, I think I think I've I've there's many ways in which I feel like I've grown as an actor doing Alba's just doing yeah. technically this show has, has been a big challenge and learning how to do it in, in this kind of a theater in this kind of a show, all these different elements that have to go into it. But at the end of the day, I think it's there's also it has kept that feeling of like I am just a theater kid with more expensive toys my my yeah. one of my cousin one of my cousins came uh back in sort of the early days and his you know and we all used to play harry potter in the backyard growing up yeah. and he was like yeah it's really just like <laughs> harry potter in the backyard but with real fire i was like yeah, yeah that is my that is my job yeah which is which is wonderful and i think that that's i'm so glad that's something that hasn't i haven't lost that feeling during the experience because that is what's so that is that feeling of being in sitting in the audience at spider-man you know and seeing yeah. that sort of it's so funny to to know that i'm on the other side of that now yeah but still feel like i sh- i am out yeah. in that house watching just like it. living a dream like totally, uh, th- totally. this is like this big dream of mine i'm gonna wake up someday but yeah absolutely um, yeah now you're gonna you're on the other side and having those people like, hey, I want to do that one day. And so I think I feel like it's a full circle moment there. Uh, and totally. you just keep doing what you do, man. Um, thank you. So thank you, Joel. So this this brings us to the end of another thrilling episode of Upper Geek Spotlight. I want to send a huge thank you to you, Joel, for joining us today and sharing uh, your journey of magic as Albus Potter. Um, Joel, we wish you all the best on your next grand adventure and can't wait to see where your talents take you next. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. And Joel, and, and so if you're on social, where can people follow you? At Joel P. Myers, two E's right. in the Myers, one S. And sometimes <laughs> that sometimes is understandably yeah. confusing um or right. there's always my my good old-fashioned website which is joelpmyers.com oh, thank you joel thank you to all our listeners thank you for tuning in if you enjoyed today's episode don't forget to follow us on your favorite podcasting platform and share this episode with your fellow geeks and potterheads Hello there, freaks and geeks. Thanks for joining us on this magical journey on Up Your Geek Spotlight. I'm your host, Lulamar Booker, and I hope you enjoyed this enchanting conversation with Joel Myers. If you enjoyed this interview, please visit our website and follow us on all of our social media platforms for more content like this. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can catch our podcast on all major podcasting platforms. Experience the wonder of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at the Lyric Theater on Broadway. Check out their website for ticket information and showtimes. Until next Next time, keep the magic alive and continue to up your geek. People always look when you three are together. Hogwarts will be the making of you, Albus. I promise you there is nothing to be frightened of there. Ah!
You're Albus Potter, and I am Scorpius Malfoy. Our parents didn't get on. You do not want to do this. Yes, I do. Expellius! I'm nothing like my dad. You're better. You're my best friend, Albus. A mistake has been made. We're going to use a time turner to save Cedric Diggory. Our journey has only just begun. Change the smallest moment, it creates ripples. I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. Lumos! If it takes centuries, we must find our son. I've never fought alone, and I never will! <laughs>